Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Now there is a big debate this week about transfer business and whether Wrexham can keep Arsenal loan goalkeeper Arthur Okonkwo. But before that, a quick shout out that it is December, it's getting towards Christmas. Christmas jumpers. I am dreaming of a red and white Christmas. You can see Phil Parkinson as the Santa there and all the players as reindeer and uh, bits and bobs. But if you're looking for a Christmas jumper, there is a great Etsy shop doing Wrexham themed Christmas jumpers. Got loads of designs and a lot to choose from. Very good quality, very comfortable. I'm probably going to wear this one into the ground before I have my Christmas jumper day at work. But if you want to get one, the link is in the description. And so without further ado, here is our debate about whether Wrexham can keep hold of superstar goalkeeper Arthur Okonkwo. On Okonkwo then, yeah. he had what looked like a, a jaw injury. You could see from the feed that he looked to be taking painkillers during the match. Comes off at half-time. Mark Howard, you know, it's always difficult when you come on and you can concede a goal. Don't really think he could have done much more than that. He spoke as well on the dock how it's the most difficult time to come onto a pitch is at half time as a goalkeeper because you you're just not in the right mindset properly you can't really prepare yourself the pressure is really on to to make that that impact straight away but on a con quote we say never fall in love with a lone player he he's my valentine i absolutely love him it's is it too late isn't it we are <laughs> we are in love with him i i remember at a time when i think he came through under Unai Emery at Arsenal and Emery really liked him and, and made him a third choice in I think it might have been a pre-season game and it was it was it was interesting news for Arsenal fans because it was like oh this guy's been promoted as third choice Emery waxed lyrical about him crew he was really good at crew and then he went to was it Austria Sturm Graz and was really good there and he came in and we said, didn't we, about how oh, it's quite rare that Parkinson doesn't like, he doesn't like, maybe a bit strong, but he doesn't really fancy loan players. He likes to build for permanent. So we go and get this loan player when Foster goes down. I think if you're Luke McNicholas, you're probably a little bit peeved, but then you've seen what a Conquo's done. I mean, I, see, I, I saw some Arsenal fans, Rich, on, on Twitter, scoffing at the idea that he'd gone to Wrexham. You know, he'd gone to Crew. he'd already done that. He'd already ticked that box, really. Um but what I would say to doubters of uh, Arsenal fans who are doubting why he's come to Wrexham, outside the Premier League, you probably don't have a brighter spotlight. You don't, you're not getting as much coverage anywhere outside the Premier League, I don't think, um, than you are at Wrexham in terms of globally. He's number one. Uh, okay, it's probably a level that he's 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 better than. Uh, he's better than than League Two. But his ability, I mean, he is, is he our Paul Mullen equivalent in goal? I mean, just the size of him, the way he yeah, holds he, the ball, doesn't parry it. He, he, you know, modern goalkeepers now, you just see they punch everything. Uh, I don't know why I'm punching the screen like like I'm going to punch you in the face. But they, they punch everything. And it, it it's so, it, it doesn't really instill confidence in defenders because you kind of flap in panic in a bit. He just catches everything. And he's so composed. And he's not the most talk rich during the tech end. He's not the most vocal of goalkeepers. No, well, the f first couple of games when, when he played, there was shouts from people in tech end being, come on, be more vocal, shout for it, call for it, command your area more. And that's just not a conquest style. He's cool, he's laid back, short sleeves, no matter what the weather is. He doesn't talk, he just gets on with the game. But he's got the, the respect already as well of, of so many senior pros in that defence. They trust him implicitly. You often get fans growing in when he takes his time when there's a, a quick ball on to play out from the back, but he just wants to make sure that he's doing his fundamental job of keeping the ball out of the net and then making the right decision with his distribution. Sometimes it could be a bit quicker. That's something that will come in time with with more confidence, more game game experience. But his, his distribution on the whole is, is still very good. And like you said, I just have no concerns whatsoever whenever he, whenever he does get on the ball. We've seen a couple of times this season that he's done Cruyff turns past opposition strikers, which always have your heart in your mouth. But I think gradually Wrexham fans will get educated that this is fine. We can trust this guy. He's, he's doing good for us. My concern is he is too good, really, for Wrexham. And well, ultimately, Rich, let me give, let you, me look give at... you a stat, Rich. Let me give you a stat here that's going to back up exactly what you've said about being too good. According to Opta... The, the, you provide all the, the football stats. Wrexham's Arthur Okonkwo has the best save percentage for stopping attempts on goal in the entire League Two. And in the top four divisions, 
He's behind only Alison Becker at Liverpool and Mads Hermansen at Leicester in terms of save percentage in their divisions. So he's the third best goalkeeper in the world in, in the UK, isn't it? Basically. Basically. That's what we're saying. Um, but, that's, what yeah, saying. That, that, that's what concerns me because I do think that right now he is a upper end League One to sort of mid table championship goalkeeper, a conquo right now. And he's got a lot of room to get even even better. And from a Wrexham point of view, you said there, you've given it the sales pitch. There is no more exciting team outside the Premier League for a player to play for. And there's huge potential, huge potential for growth, huge chance for him to market himself if he wanted to be a brand. I really don't think that's it. That interests him at all. He's just a very good goalkeeper. That's what he's good at. That's what he wants to wants to focus on. So in terms of a Conquo's CV, Wrexham would probably be the most logical in terms of your brand recognition and getting your name out there. But for his point of view, what does being in League One protect? I mean, best case is Wrexham are in League One next season. And you know, that would be a player who's matching our ambition of going up the leagues. But the concern is then, if Wrexham are going to sign him, they will only offer him look a free four year deal, you'd imagine, because that's been that's been what, what we've done in the past. Make exceptions for the older players over the age of sort of thirty two, whatever, they can have one, two year deals. But a player like a Conquo, you will tie him down for three or four years. What if Wrexham go up and they stagnate? All this momentum he's built and this opportunity being a championship goalkeeper goes. He then just becomes a League One goalkeeper. And the best, and he has maybe two, three seasons in League One because that's a very realistic possibility for Wrexham. But what I could say is uh, that's obviously that's football. That is the gamble you take as a player. You could go; it might not fit in. You might not be sort of like universally adored, and that goes for all these players. You know, we're talking about Elliot Lee or Paul Mullin, but a Conquo is number one. He's settled in the environment. There's an element that he could get swept up by promotion like Ben Foster did you know he, Ben Foster I think if he looks back logically would have said that would have been the perfect time to bow out but you get swept up in it you're human beings you're emotional you know it's hard to turn Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney down when they're shoving a contract on a pen in your face um, so Conquer could get swept up what I would say is release clause that might be a logical workaround which Rich where you say right put a, I don't know what they're going to put in, say put a 1.5 million release clause. It might even be less than that. They might come to an agreement. We'll put a Oof, 1 million yeah. release clause in your, in your contract. Or, or, or I don't know what, I'm just plucking, say a million, just say they'll yeah. put a million quid release clause in your contract. And if you stagnate, and you, but you st- he, he's still playing well, I just don't see him dropping off. If the team drops yeah. off in a few years, I don't see his form dropping off to the point where he wouldn't be wanted. You know, he's got Arsenal on his CV. He'll have good contacts in the game. It'd be valuable abroad for that experience he had at Arsenal. Um, and, and Wrexham's obviously globally known. Release clause is the only way that I could see around. I, I couldn't, I, I can't see him just penning a four year contract with no release clause and just, and just chancing yeah. it, rolling the dice. Doesn't strike me as that kind of guy when he knows how good he is. And, and, and Arsenal fans know how good he is. He's just not going to get in there. Exactly. Yeah. And for any of us who've played football manager, I'm not sure how common they are in real life football, but the non-promotion release clause. So if Wrexham didn't go up immediately from League One, then then the release clause would come into activation. But obviously if they went up, he probably wouldn't be looking to leave anyway, etc. But yeah, I think that probably is the way to do it. I mean, all, all that needs to happen now is Wrexham have to get promoted because it, I, can't, I just cannot categorically see him staying if we didn't go up because another season in League Two would would be for me a backward step, no matter how the, good he is. Yeah, and the the thing if um, if we don't go up, just forget it. You can kiss kiss your new uh, your new love goodbye, Rich. It's over. You get the you're breaking up. It's it's done. You you, it, you can have an emotional breakup. Get some chocolate. Make yourself feel better. Some ice cream. Uh, he's going basically walking out the door. If we go up, there's a chance. What I would say is let's just play fantasy here, football manager fantasy. We've been dreaming about having a player that can go all the way with you in terms of going from League Two to Premier League. Now, the Impenza, the sort of Luton and Penza route. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the romantic one there would be to have Jordan Davis go all the way. That's your local hero. That's the guy who's been the ball boy at the club. But if you're looking on quality, you've got, and, and for us, you know, Rob Ryan Red sponsored Jacob Mendy Mendy. It'd be great to see him go all the way. But if you're being realistic with the current group of any player in there, this free for a, me. A, a, but for me, if you ask me to pick one, 
I would say talent wise and just position and everything, Okonko is the one that could. He's got the right age profile. You know, it's not it's gonna take us time to climb these divisions. It could take us, you know, his whole career for all for all we know. We don't know. Yeah. He is the one where if you really could just make him an offer to say, look, we love you here. I'm not sure he, you know, like, cares so much about the adjacent. You're saying the Alan Pardew seven year deal or whatever it was I'm, at Newcastle. I'm, I'm saying drop that on what I don't even know. What kind of wages would it take for him? I don't know. But I would say do all you can. Push the boat firmly out. Right yeah. out. Um and I would I would also like to say, in relation to his, his recent injury, that I am willing to donate my jaw if it means he's he's back playing at any time soon. I, I will reckon, put my put myself reckon, up for medical do you reckon, purposes. Do you, yeah. do you reckon your jaw is stronger than Arthur Conquo's? Not at all, no. No. Ask him, I, yeah, just you should see me when I get bad reader comments. Yeah, my jaw I'm not <laughs> I'm not strong enough to deal with the criticism or or anything, so but so, so you're saying three. So are you saying a Conquo is in that that could go? A Conquo, Liam Mullen, I'd say the three who you you sort of say in terms of romanticism and the fact they have got enough ability could go into sort of wider squad roles if you need it. I think but the three of them could potentially. I mean, they won't. That but, is the bottom line. But, right, they won't, but I'm but... saying, are they realistically in an age profile where you know what is Lee now? Twenty nine. A Conquo is something like 21, 22? Yeah, a Conquo is the one anomaly there who steps up because he's so good now at this age, much better than anyone else of his age in the, in the squad to be doing it this consistently. But yeah, the other, the other two are just fanciful dreaming. It won't happen. Because like you said, I do think that ultimately and what's got to be so fascinating for, for Wrexham fans and outside fans will be what happens when not you lose momentum, but you maybe do stagnate and you do need to go again and you need even more money and you need not just money, but you need a combination of a proper wider football structure. You need a bit of luck. Your recruitment needs to go continental, global, rather than just lower league. That'll be the interesting point. But I think that whatever happens to the club, like you said there, a Conquo will tick, tick every box and Wrexham will never get to the point where a Conquo is not the guy we want in goal. No, and Rich, what I would say is, having been going through Mullins' book and, and to the final 100 pages, um, I think a training ground is going to be key to enticing these top players because I think he said when Elliot Lee turned up on his first day to see, I think he said firemen were hosing the pitch down. Um, Elliot Lee had a look on his face that apparently had the rest of the squad in stitches um, wondering what the what hell he signed up for. for? Yeah. And Mullins just said, Welcome to Wrexham, mate. And uh, <laughs> so, so as funny as that is, you know, like you say, you, 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 we're going to have to become even more professional than we already are in terms of just having top facilities that will entice top players. The spotlight will entice players, not a conquer, I don't think, in terms of he's, I don't think he cares about that, but I think a lot of players do. You know, we, we work in, in across the Premier League where players do care about followers and um, commercial deals and all that sort of thing. Wrexham's obviously a good gateway to that outside the Premier League. But I don't know if you... Do you reckon he watches YouTube? If he watches YouTube, we're going to make a plea to Arthur Oconquo that Please stay. you should stay. Please stay. You are the number one at Wrexham. You're loved. Um, you have a much stronger jaw than me and Rich. And for all the above, you should just stay. And if you, we go up, give us a year. I'm all for the release clause, Rich. I'm all for giving players... Have we got to do the sort of ben, of Fo- ben Foster chant of one more year? That we that we do with Talky <laughs> away. Year. I mean, I mean, I was saying to Ben Foster to hang it up, but in this in this instance, one more year. That's what that I would be good to hear chanted at you, wouldn't it? Imagine that. Imagine how savage that would be as a player hearing the fans chant, "Give it oh, up, hang so it retire, up. give it up, yeah, retire, give it up." Yeah, 